Good evening and welcome to the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup here at the Superdome in Sydney, Australia. Group B action, it's game day six. Australia are taking on Japan. Japan may be a little bit of a disappointing tournament, but they have an opportunity to end on a high note <laughs> if they can get a win here tonight. Shona Thorburn alongside the Australian great Andrew Gaze. Andrew, what do you have to say about this Japanese team? Yeah, it's been really disappointing. They uh, will not figure in quarterfinal action. And when you consider just 12 months ago, they were playing off for a gold medal at the Olympic Games. It's uh, been somewhat of a dramatic fall of grace from them but there are some explanations as to why change of coach a few players unavailable because of injury uh, but uh, you're right they're still going to play with a lot of pride and uh, they're looking to finish the tournament really strong you said it why not go out with a bang if they can get what would be considered an upset here tonight against the opals and now for this australian team what about that win that <laughs> gutsy win last night over Canada, three-point win, 75-72. One of the best games we've seen in this tournament, Andrew. Uh, spot on, Shona. It was a fantastic uh, atmosphere here at Kudos Bank Arena, and the way in which the fans rallied the, the home side was something special, and they had a lot of heroes in the game overall, but a couple of stands out in Ezi Magdabogor, and of course, I think the other one is Steph Tolbert. Steph Tolbert almost had a triple-double in the game against Canada, and just the aggression and the, the work they did on the defensive end, they had to go to another level, and they got there, and that got them into, at the very least, quarter-final action. And then, in the game before here, this one, Serbia did a favour for Australia by beating France. So Australia is guaranteed a, a first or second place finish in their pool, which means they avoid the powerful, incredible United States team in a quarterfinal clash. You said it, Andrew. I mean, the fate of the Opals team was actually in the hands of another team. You never want to be in that situation. But I guess the stars are aligned. This is why you host a tournament, and it is paying off for Australia. We see tonight Beck Allen. She's not suiting up. No. She's not going to play. We know she had that rib, in rib injury two games ago against Serbia. You said other people stepped up, and you are exactly right. Other people stepped up from Australia. So there is the games today. Mali lost to Canada, 65-88. Serbia and France, what a game that was. Serbia, big three-point shot. Beats France. And right now we have Japan coming up against Australia. So those are the results right now. They are going to change around a little bit after this game. We will take a short pause for the playing of the national anthem. First up is the national anthem of Japan. Now, the national anthem of Japan. The National Anthem of Australia.
And now the gift exchange between the two teams as we will shortly meet the referees. I always like how friendly the players <laughs> are <laughs> during this moment, but in about three minutes, it'll be a different look on their faces. And there you have them, the three referees tonight. So in the middle from Panama, Julio Cesar and Naya Friel, Martin Vulic from Croatia, and Yasmina Alcaraz Moreno from Spain will be calling tonight's action. And is of course uh, Australia, although they've locked up a top two spot and avoid the United States in that crossover round, as we take a look at the Japanese starters. So Takado, Tokashiki, Miyazaki, Todo, and Akaho will be getting the start tonight. That's the same starting lineup that coach uh, Toru Onzuka has gone with all tournament long. So he has a lot of faith in them and why change anything right now? So there you see Toru Onzuka who took over. Uh, he has coached them to a gold medal at the FIBA Asia Cup, but he took over for Tom after the Tokyo Olympics. Well, that's right, and uh, tough assignment when you're coming in and inheriting a really successful team. Now, he was a part of that program he was, yeah. as an assistant, but uh, when you lose a couple of players, it's always a little tougher as well. Well, there are the Opals, Talbot, Magbegor, Tolo, Blitzavs, and Whitcomb. So the same lineup that she went to yesterday, Sarah Blitzavs taking that starting spot with Beck Allen being out. Well, that's right, but there has been a slight change there with Ezzy Megbegor coming into the right. starting lineup. And that's, uh, I think, a reward for just one of the great performances of the tournament we saw from Ezzy last night, what she did on the glass, five block shots to go along with her 16 points. She was a game changer, and uh, she's coming in for Kayla George, who'd started the previous games. And you mentioned it, Mariana Tolo, she didn't start that first game for the Australians either against France, which they ended up losing. But the minutes that Astra uh, Tolo got in that game, she was absolutely outstanding. And same thing, Sandy Bron Coach Sandy Brondello for Australia rewarded mm. Tolo with a starting spot after that game. And I think they have played really well since then. And uh, you're right, you look at the fifth ranked at the World Cup with 47.2% from the two-point line, which is not bad. A lot of mid-range shots with Japan as well. So they play it a little differently. And have a look at that. Australia won their last five games against Japan at the World Cup. They've dominated. And not only that, they've done it with a 20-plus point margin. So at World Cup play, they've been uh, very successful. And an Australian win, and it's a meaningful game for them, if they win, they actually will win the pool. And that will mean not only do they avoid the United States in the quarterfinals, but then when you advance into the semifinals, you avoid them as well. So it does provide a huge incentive for Australia to know that the only time you're going to meet the Americans is going to be in that gold medal game. And when you're in the knockout phase, that's a good situation. Yeah, you said it. You do not want to go up against the Australians before the gold medal game and up against the Australians before the gold medal game. And if they win, it could possibly turn out like that for this Australian Opals team. Well, tip off happening shortly here in Sydney at the Superdome. Good evening and welcome to the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. We are here in Sydney, Australia. Shona Thorburn alongside Andrew Gaze calling tonight's action. Japan win the tip off. Akoho kicks it. Tokashiki, oh. Tokashika rolling to the basket. Great find. It was a beautiful one ball situation. No weak side help coming on that sideline screen and good recognition with the pass. We can talk about a lot of these players for Australia who really stepped up without having Beck Allen on the court. And one of them is Sammy Whipcomb. Some big shots late in the game yesterday against Canada. It is, and that was one of the more physical games. Here we see that on-ball screen. We've got help coming too low. No one catching the roll-up on that high pick and easy penetrating pass. 
with the physical nature of the game 24 hours ago. Deep three-point shot is off the back of the rim, but they get the rebound. Just hope you would just wonder if the straight is, if, whether fatigue's going to be a factor. Akaho, three-point shot. It looked good, but it's off the mark. Talbot. Wow. That's a good sign. I thought she was exceptional yesterday. Didn't score a lot, but she did absolutely everything else that was needed of her. 11 points, nine rebounds, and eight assists, and some hellacious defense. <laughs> yeah, you said it. What about that steal yeah. to that fast break layup? Probably the biggest basket of this tournament for her. And no turnover, hustle for the ball. It's Whitcomb who comes up with it. No look pass to Blitzavs. Magbegor falls, somehow kicks it out. Blitzavs is open in the corner. Two point shot is off the mark. Miyazaki again to Tokashiki. She can't score, but she's fouled from behind. Again, it's off the on-ball. They're, they're trying to show on the on-ball screens, and when you're doing that, you need some weak side help. There is a nice pass by Talbot, and the kick-out pass on that double team, wide open, and knocks it down. Talbot has had her struggles in the first two games with her shooting percentages, but really since then, she was 50% last night and gets the first one to drop this evening. And... Looking at this, the difference and trying to find an explanation for why Japan has struggled so much in this tournament. Yep, they've changed the coach, which always leads to a different voice. And then uh, I think it's Rui Mashidi, who in Tokyo Olympics, check this out, 12 and a half assists per game. That's unheard of, <laughs> men's or women's. That is a big loss. Tell bit to Magbegor. Whitcomb finds Tolo inside to Magbegor. Great team basketball by the Opals on that possession. Yeah, that high-low action has been a feature of their play right throughout the tournament. The bigs really connected and working well together. Toto's penetration. She gets all the way by the basket, and it's good. Well, Tolo's been beaten on the roll-off twice, and she said, well, I'm not going to get beaten again, and that time stayed at home and there was no help coming off on the penetration. Three-point shot from Blitzaps. Now Miyazaki pushing the tempo. Okoe, three-point shot is good. Well, they take more threes than anyone in the competition. Their shooting percentages are down a little bit from 12 months ago, but they are going to let it fly from the three-point line. 29 three-point attempts a game. Talbot, tough catch. Tolo, back to Talbot. That's off the mark. Okoe, <laughs> hit one, can't make it two in a row. Steph Talbot just takes it all the way. Her confidence right now is off the charts. You can see it, she's a completely different player than what we saw in that first game. And she's been rewarded playing a lot of minutes. Leads the team in minutes, and now with Beck Allen out, she's so versatile, Steph Toll, but she can guard one through four. Okoe, that's her second three in this quarter. Whitcomb. Finds a rolling Tolo, really no one. Three red jerseys around that pass. Miyazaki. Miyazaki gets it back. Japan taking their time on this offensive possession. Okoe drives baseline, no one to pass to and it's a turnover. So inside look to Tolo, and it's good as Japan wants to call. Oh no, sorry, they don't want a timeout.
it was a sub and now that we've had the stop in the play, it's going to allow the opportunity for the sub. There's that on-ball screen. You saw Tolo previously. She was hedging on those screens and got beat on the roll-off twice. And that's what happens when you lose a bit of faith in that help coming on the weak side. And then if you do stay at home, you've got to make sure you close out to Okoye, who she's knocked down a couple of threes already. I'm not sure why Australia with their situation that... that they don't switch more on those on-ball screens. Just switch them and stay at home. And until you start getting beaten down low, maybe they're a little concerned about Tolo and others guarding Japan's the not penetration. That tall, though. No. So the guards can, you know, cover the the bigs, and then I think Tolo use your height, little you know, gap a little bit. Well, Miyazaki just proved us wrong as she That's took right. Magbagor off the dribble from the perimeter. That's what they'd be worried about when you get into those switching situations. And Talbot finds Magbagor, but it's going to be red ball as it goes off her hands. So a little disjointed there, that offensive possession by Australia. Some of the better defense we've seen from Japan throughout this series to start this first quarter. And the big question for them is, how can they sustain it? They've been good in patches, and we can see why historically they've been, over in recent times, uh, as good enough to win a silver medal, but they just haven't had the ability to sustain it. And you look at the way that the coach rotate. They are playing really 12 people, which is hard to do. There's only two players playing more than 20 minutes, and no one plays more than 24. As Okohe drives hard to the basket, and she's fouled. But, you know, with the uh, COVID pandemic, we know that the Tokyo Olympics was pushed back a year. So it was supposed to happen in 2020. Got pushed back to 2021. Mm. We've seen a lot of coaching changes, yeah. but it happened in 2021, where normally if you're going to make co co coaching changes, it would happen right after the Olympics. So a lot of these new coaches have not had a lot of time, like Coach Toru uh, mm. Onzuko, to put in his systems, his philosophy, and really go to work because the Olympics was pushed back World Cup was the year after. Guess what? We have Paris 2024 in I just know. two years. No, spot on. It is a, a tough fact up that they've got to deal with. And a lot of these international teams with players playing all over the world don't get a lot of time to spend together. Tolo skip pass to Imagine, who's been shooting the three ball well in this tournament. But that was not anywhere close. So Japan up by three, ball back to Australia though. Imagine. <laughs> to George. They go inside to Tolo, does a good job keeping the ball high, using that off arm as she is going to draw the foul and get to go to the free throw line. That foul is going to go against Miyazawi, I believe. And this has been a feature of this first quarter as well. Clearly, they've recognized Australia, Sandy Brondello, that they've got a, an advantage down low. And the little high-low action that they're running is uh, not happening by accident. It's clearly been by design. And they figure that that's going to be a productive way to go about creating good shots and so far it has and you know i think uh, the first couple game get couple games and a half that beck allen played they relied heavily on outside scoring since she's been out they've other people have had to step up and their bigs have done that but they're also getting a lot more touches around the basket as well tolo inside to george they get it out and now Kayla gets it in again, finds Wallace in the corner, nice passing, shots off the front of the rim, but George kicks it out. Another chance for Australia. And Mawuli comes from nowhere. I thought she had a lot of ball. That was pretty good help side defense in my opinion. No, I agree. And considering the type of contact that we've seen the officials let them play through, 
there's the roll. You can see it was open, and that's just two people just coming together. Yeah, she didn't hit her with her body. No. Maybe if she was there half a second earlier, she would have picked it. Imagine. Finds Wallace inside Totolo. She's got the mismatch. Ah. Nice baseline move. Drop step there by Mariana Tolo. Yes, Suma with a nice hesitation draws the contact and finishes. Wallace just goes all the way. Mawuli now trying to get something going. Great hands there by, you mentioned it, Steph Talbot, who has been exceptional on the defensive end, especially against that game yesterday for Australia with their win over Canada. Mawuli is fouled on a three-point basket, so a possible four-point play by her. Tough shot. And Tolo does a good job, recognizes the shooter in the corner and closes out, but closes out just a little too tight. Gets into her landing space and gets called for the foul. Not a common sight, that right there, a four-point play. Does not happen often. So now full court trapping here by Japan. Good press break by Australia. Jackson, and this is aggressive, but a foul is gonna go against Yamamoto. It, it is clunking on the offensive end for the Opals. Every possession is contested. A lot of little deflections, bobbling of the ball. And the freedom of movement when they're trying to run their cuts, it's, it's, it's pretty tough. George to Wallace in the corner. George gets it back. A little bit of a fumble. They find Majin. She's going to have to put it up. She does. And no good, Yamamoto comes up with the rebound, but Wallace picks it from her. So another offensive board by Australia, and another opportunity to score as they find the legend, Lauren Jackson. Didn't quite have her legs then, you could tell. The, 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 didn't have the arc on, the, on a shot that you normally see. Bit of a line drive. Mawuli, spin move, loses it. Uh, it was last touched by Japan, so ball is going to go back to the Opals. And you speak of the legend in Lauren Jackson, and she's come in and, and has not looked out of place at 41 years of age, really accepting of her role as well. Only playing at just a touch under 10 minutes. Comes in and stretches the floor with a three-point shot and is a, is a real phys physical presence for the time she's in there. Well, Andrew, you said it, comes in, stretches the defense with her three-point shot, and she heard you. She's shooting it at 45% from the three-point line because she really doesn't pay, take a bad three. No, she doesn't. And they have a couple of set plays out of that horn yeah. set to a flare for her. So great defense there. They come up with the steal, and they have an opportunity to tie or go up one at the end of the first quarter. Jackson turning, missing. Wallace almost scores, but she can't finish. What a first quarter. Great start by Japan. Great comeback by Australia as they trail 16 to 18 over Japan at the end of the first. We take a look at the stats and, well, Japan has really led the way in that category. They're 50% overall from the field and a healthy 50% from the three-point line, three of six. Australia, on the other hand, they've had some challenges. Six of 17 
from the field uh, in total. And two of six from threes. Rebound count in favour of Australia with the nine. And Japan opened it up. And that on-ball action, which really you see a lot of it by both these teams, has been pretty good for both. Running the floor. There's he mag the door. And there's the kick out. You collapse. And Steph Talbot knocks it down. And I think Australia... Like you mentioned, Sean, just weathered the storm and they were able to find their groove after getting down. Didn't panic, made a few substitutions, changed the look a little bit, and they're in for a battle. You can almost forget the record where Japan's record has been poor in the tournament, only winning the one game. And now they... But they're dangerous, really dangerous. They're playing just with freedom because it's not going to mean anything to them, win or lose. So it makes it challenging. We've got a really talented team that, that is, doesn't have any pressure on them right now. Yeah, you said it. Download your Courtside 1891 app right now to get all basketball news worldwide. I agree with you completely. Japan able to play completely free, knowing that they're not moving on, but they could make things very, very interesting if they pull off a win here tonight. And salvage some pride from the, the tournament. Yeah. And salvage something, go home on a positive. Imagine to Wallace, they're looking inside to LJ. George gets it to Whitcomb. Jackson open from the top. That's off the front of the rim, but it's going to be a rebounding foul. <laughs> Smart foul, in my opinion, by the smaller Miyazaki. Yeah, Miyazaki, she was, she was doing her best to box out, but clearly outsized, and it was going to be a certain oh, two. calling a... No, the ball, sorry. You saw Kayla George lining up for the free throw. I thought... Oh, she did try and chip it in, though. Yeah, that's what I okay. thought. Okay. I, I guess they've called it on the rebound, yeah. not on the shot attempt. She was holding her even before the ball hit George's hands. Madgen almost fumbles it out of bounds. George with the step through. How about this? Toto to Akaho. Okoe stops. Takada, the captain, in and out. Imagine inside to George, quick pass to Whitcomb. And maybe a little bit of tired legs here we're yeah. seeing early in this game from both teams. We do know this is the fifth game in six days. Takada, she missed the last time down, but not that time. They're so good at identifying any sort of help in their ball movement of Japan. If you don't have any ball pressure and they can just whip it around the horn, they're tough to stop. So now Wallace pulls it out. George with a nice finish. And that middle cylinder when they run their on balls, they're far more successful at getting something done as opposed to their sideline pick and rolls. A little bit more of an opportunity to get into help side if you're on the other opposite side when it's on yeah. the sideline though, right? Whereas when you have shooters in the middle, you can't help off as easily. Akao is fouled from behind by Wallace. Okoe, excuse me. And there's that three-point shot by the captain of Japan, Takada, who, like always, has had a very solid tournament for Japan. Just over 10 points a game. Shooting you know, around 50%. Can't really ask for much more. Number eight from Japan. Quick shot from Okoe. Whitcomb to Magbegor. Talk about that young star for the Opals. After yesterday's performance, 
I think she gained an even bigger fan base yeah. than she already had. Now she was uh, the lead item in the sports section of all the news and on in the papers and, and thoroughly deserved. It was a inspired performance by Magda Gorp. As he, and she, she's on the floor many more than any other Opal. She just everywhere and Wickham with a crafty little move around the basket. Yeah, I would say typically more known for her three-point shooting as Miyazaki's shot is well off. Wallace pushing the break. She just goes straight at the basket and it's going to be a blocking foul going against a Koe. Well, it is... So an and one. Let's take a look at this. Oh, that was uh, Whitcombs. You said Little Crafty. Oh, sorry. Yeah, she missed the basket. So it's two shots. Yeah, she comes with a lot of energy. Christy Wallace, she's an elite defender. And when she gets it in transition, you've seen the last couple of times, and she's come up empty, but she'll put a lot of heat on the rim. Fearless about getting to the rack. Akoha gets it back. She has the mismatch against Tolo. Takada is open at three, and that's going to be another foul on a three-point shooter by yep. Australia. Yeah, you don't like that when you're coaching. You want to close out. Tried to get the run by and just put some heat on the shot, but just that probably more with the with the body on this that one than it was with the arms. But nevertheless, it's uh, still a miss. And Takata, when you've knocked down a few, you can see there it is, just down low, landed right in the spot. That is. No doubt about that one. Clear foul. And you and I talked about that. It's one of those, you have to pr protect the three-point shooters. You need to let them be able to land from where they took off, right? A hundred percent. And we've seen how it can be really dangerous if you don't need to provide a, a strong disincentive to even try that. Because when you're in the air and you're coming down to land, if you don't have that space, legs, ankles, all sorts of issues can arise. So Japan now, two-point lead, just under three minutes gone by here in the second quarter. Let's talk about their rotations that they run, that Japan use already, and we played a quarter and almost a half. He's got all 12, 12 plays, some minutes in the game. Wallace finds Talbot. Penetrates baseline, spin move, and they're going to call that a travel, though. And given all the shuffling in the feet and some of the unwhistled travels we see, that one was one that was a touch and go whether it actually was a travel. That's where it gets a little confusing for the players. <laughs> and you saw them. Kind of scratching their head, too. Yasuma. And a steal by Wallace as we have a three on two. And she has Wickham in the corner. But great no-look pass to Mariana Tolo. And, and that's the beauty of having a good shooter run the wing. You saw the defense hedging on the left and thinking, should I, shouldn't I hedge out to... Wickham, and instead it was the no look up to Tolo, who did a good effort to get ahead and make that an option. Australia, the leading free throw shooting team in the competition at a very healthy 86%. That won't help the cause. <laughs> 0 for 2 from Tolo. Now get back defense a little slow by Australia as Hiroshita misses her shot, though. Talba, I've had an impression she's played this entire game so far. Whitcomb from three, and Australia takes the lead That's what for the do. first time. It is, and Christy Wallace here 
running the point gives Wickham a little bit more freedom to work off the ball and spot up and get in the lanes. They find it. Yasuma drives, finds Hiroshita. She gets Wickham off her feet, but that shot's off. Ball out of bounds. It's going to be Australia ball. I don't know about you, Shona, but as a player, the constant coming in and out and playing 12 people, that, that was never my go. I never really felt comfortable about that. I played in teams that mostly had an eight-person rotation, maybe eight and a half, but, and you, you knew the type of minutes and when you were going to play. Now, tournament plays different. I appreciate that, but it is tough. How do, you, how do you feel about this eight games in 10 days? It's tough. Oh, look at that. Tokashiki wide open. Nice find by Mawuli. Particularly the way the games are being officiated, being so physical, it's such a drain. And when you're trying to see the very best in the world play basketball, it is hard to play that many games in such a short period of time. Both these teams, this is the last group phase game. They've played five games each. Mag Bigor. Tough shot off the backboard, it's good. <laughs> I guarantee you she didn't call bank. She didn't realize <laughs> she was going to shoot it off the bank, but she'll take it. Well, it's already 9 p.m. here in Sydney. Banks are closed. <laughs> Not enough for Ezzy. <laughs> Must be the ATM or something's working here <laughs> at Kudos Bank Arena. Tokashiki gets it inside. A little bit of a height difference here. They kick it back out. Yasuma. Three-point shot, Mawuli there fighting for the rebound. And it's gonna stay Japanese ball. Look at this nice pass, no-look pass yeah. from Mawuli to Tokashiki running the floor. Is that bank shot we saw from Ezzy. Had to shoot it. Only second to go on the shot clock. A little elevator yeah. screen, and they're going to call a moving screen. What do you think about that call? I need to see it again. It is. It's, it's tough. I, I think that you saw Wickham trying to get through. You call the elevator, the gate play. Yeah. We see it a lot, but it's where the two defenders, the screeners, they allow the offense to go through, and they try and shut the gate. And what they're saying is that they shut the gate too late, and it was a moving screen. Always touch and go on that one. And Wickham just with a little something for Tokoshiki. Tokoshiki, yeah. Tokoshiki. Well, she said sorry after, so I think she knew maybe she moved into it a little bit late, like you said. Magbigor. Nice seal off by Mariana Tolo. As now Australia has taken a three-point lead, so Coach Toru Konzuka, Onzuka, excuse me, wants to talk about it. There you see Beck Allen cheering on her teammates. All she can do right now, hopefully we'll see her back yeah. after tomorrow's rest day in the quarterfinals. Good job there by the Opals and giving themselves offensive rebounds leading to second chance points. Mawuli gives it back to the point guard, Yasuma.
Yeah, Sumo with some fancy ball handling, but Tolo says, no way, not in my house. And that was good weak side help that time. Comes in, as he's right there, but Tolo with the block, robbed Ezzy of a stat on the block <laughs> shots, because she was certainly going to get there. Ezzy with the five last night against Canada. Yeah, she had her own block party last night. <laughs> Yasuma attacking the basket. Okoe, three-point shot is good, and the game is tied. With plays like that, you can see why you're reluctant to come off your player and provide that help. So quick release, and they're so good, so comfortable. Magbegor kicks it out to Tolo. Her two-point shot is good. Well, it's a back and forth game here in this second quarter. Hiroshita, she can shoot it. And that was just off the back of the iron from our spot. That shot looked good. Japan with an offensive rebound and another opportunity as Yusuma doesn't want to get blocked again, so she kicks it out. Okoe is going to have to put it up, but it's going to be a foul. I think the referee was saying that Magbegor hit her on the head. There was literally like two seconds left, one second left on the shot clock too. So the foul, the foul bailed out Japan because they were going to have to throw up a, a prayer. Darcy Garbin coming in. There was another unsung hero. Played Yesterday. 10 minutes last night yeah. against Canada and had eight points and was very, very efficient and important in the limited times that she got. Mawuli, step back three-point shot, and oh another my. foul on a three-pointer. If I'm not wrong, that's the third Absolutely in this is. half. It is, and this time it's Steph Talbot. And, and when you've got a team that's knocked down some threes, and they've been pretty efficient from there, three of five, oh, excuse me, five of 14 from the three-point line, and just getting a little too tight. I'm not sure what the fans are upset about. To me, it looked pretty clear. <laughs> I think we had the same replay as them, but clearly the fans are not happy with that call as Mawuli is going to get to go to the free throw line for three. I think, you know, Japan, their three-point shooting team, they have mm. quick releases from the three-point range. And clearly right now, Australia, it's a focus to not give up any easy three-point shots. Yeah. But they're just jumping a little bit too late into the shooter, yeah. I think. Like I said, they take more threes than any other team in the competition. They're about mid-tier in percentages. And that would have been part of the scouting report. If they're going to beat us, let, don't let them beat you from the three-point line. And perhaps a little overzealous in some of those closeouts. Just want to contest and have them shoot contested threes. Well, great job there by Mawuli, who shrugged off the, boo uh, the boos by the Australian crowd as she knocks down all three. Garbin out to Talbot. Her three-point shot is well off. She had, a, she had some time, too. I think she caught the ball around the seven-second mark. Well, right now you've got two elite. They're four and five for the Opals, elite three-point shooters. In so, George and Garbin? Yeah. Yeah. So perhaps their horn action, you know, when they got their pick and flare, pick and pops, and it's even their sideline pick and pops, they do try and stretch the defense out. Yamamoto goes inside, or sorry, oh, and then just an errant pass, or a good defense, I should say, by Wallace. Uh, great job getting back in transition. Defense is Japan. Imagine finds that shooting big, and Garbin answers. <laughs> she heard you. Well, she's been remarkably efficient in the WNBL. She's a Perth girl, plays for the Perth Lynx, and 
focused on 40 percent high 39 point something that's rounded up to 40 and that is good that's very Elite. very good well coach toru onzuka wants to give a talk minute 16 and his team is down two Well, Jeff, you talked about George and Garbin and how they can stretch the floor. And that is a nice stroke. And Jeff, and, excuse me, Andrew. Yes, that's okay. And knocks it down from the three-point line. Steady when she can catch and shoot. When you're guarding her, you've got to close her out and make it put it to the floor. If she can just stand there and shoot it. She's going to make more than two misses. Well, in fact, she's right on in this tournament. Throughout this tournament here for Australia, she's at 50% from the three-point line, which is uber elite. Yeah. So Japan out of the timeout, using a lot of clock here. They find the shooter, as they are all shooters, but not able to knock it down is Yoshida. Now Garbin hands it off to Wallace. Wallace, tough layup. Garbin there for the offensive rebound and easy putback. Right place, the right time. Again, good penetration there by Christy Wallace. Nice oh. attack and finish by Yamamoto. That's a tough finish, considering how small she is. She knew she had to be fancy with it. You talked about this horn set. Garbin, shot clock winding down. Majin from the corner, that rolls in and out. And what a first half we have for you as Australia have a slight two point lead over Japan, 36 to 34. And it's really nothing in this. You look at the stats across the board, it's pretty even. And as we predicted, Japan really doing most of, a lot of their damage or certainly have a point of emphasis on the three-point line. They've had 26 field goal attempts, 16 of them coming from the three-point line. Rebound count pretty even. Australia moving the ball a little bit better. Some of those on-ball screens, the pick and rolls led to that slight advantage in the assist category and Tolo has come on and quietly gone about her work and neither team really lighting it up from the perimeter. Four of 12 from the three point line, 33% for Australia. And for both teams, they've both had some looks in on ball screens. It's been a, a little bit of miscommunication, a little bit of feeling each other out and how they're going to play the on-ball screens and, and, it, and in Australia's case I think a little indecision a couple of times on what their rules were going to be in those on-ball situations and maybe it's just me but I've seen a little bit of tired legs in this yeah. game some open missed shots by Japan by Australia 36-34, not incredibly high scoring for a first half between mm. two teams we know who can definitely score the ball. I mean, Australia averaging 18 points, 80 points a game, but it has been back and forth. Lead changes, 13 lead changes in 20 minutes. The biggest lead for Australia is only four, and the biggest lead for Japan, only five. So it's been a back and forth battle. Yeah, no one's really been able to get the ascendancy and take control of the game. And 
It's been super physical. As we mentioned, five games in six days. And when you think of what lies ahead, this tournament is a war of attrition. It's just who is going to be able to keep fresh enough to be giving themselves a, a, a chance. And it's really, really physical basketball that you've got to contend with. And, and that wears you down as well. And I think the longer the, game, the longer this game goes, the more you'd expect Australia with the home court. And you're looking for those intangibles where you get can generate a bit of momentum from the crowd to get you over the line. That's all part of having a home court advantage. Yeah, you said it. Well, boy, do we have a good one for you. Australia desperately wanting that win, knowing if they can pull off the win here tonight, they will finish in the top two. Don't go far because we've got a great ball game. Australia with a two-point lead over Japan. Who will you become when the moment arrives and you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands, it's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. My word, she did. Wow, Austin, don't sleep on her. How about those hops by Gabby wow, Williams to come up with the, the steal? As uh, she goes all the way. Highlight play, put that on the top 10 because that is a steal out of the air and then right on the rim. We love it from Gabby Williams. Nice little skip and finish. Yeah, great job there by Dembele getting the start for Molly here in this second. Tolo. Backdoor cut, Steph, Steph, Talbot. One of the biggest baskets of this tournament by that woman right there. And what about the pass as well? And China takes it away. Lee Mong, no look oh. pass, Gu Jin. That looks like they're having some fun. That is why Lee Mong is one of the best players on this Chinese lineup. They are definitely back in this game. Let's see if they can dig down and get a stop. Anderson, tough make. And she sees her layup roll in while drawing the foul and is going to get to go to the free throw line. Good move and takes the hit here. Rebound, Han Shu. Yuan, the pass up. Wow, what a move. Wu Tong Tong. Wu Tong. Oh, she is doing it right now. She's putting on a show, but I love what she's doing defensively as well. She's staying connected to whatever player she's guarding. Really impressive. The tournament, so they get really well established roles. Izzy says, not in my house. <laughs> she almost hit that ball into the first row of fans. It's like a volleyball spike. Don't beat Kim. Scanning. Four seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Pac has to take it in on a much taller Stewart. What a Love move! It. Cheech on Pac! On Stewart! She had Stewart going all over the place. Korea finding ways to keep that scoreboard ticking over. They got their problems on the defensive end. says, get that out of here.
everyone. Welcome back to the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. Boy, do we have a game for you. And there's a lot on the line in this game as we see Japan's top scorer, Monica Okoe. So okay. a great job by her. Three three-pointers already. It is, and uh, she really spreads the floor. And what she does is she, she reads the play. She gets in her spots, and to Japan's credit, they know how to find it. She'd hit that first one, and then they got her a few more looks, which was well done, well coached. And down the other end of the floor, Mariana Tolo is just goes about her business in a, a really unintrusive way. And it's not until you see the stats and you realize the influence that she's had and she's the eight points, averaging 10 on the tournament, perfect from the field. It's just those little blemish from the free throw line where Australia have been outstanding. And they got a bit to chat about, I think, in this halftime break. They're still not out on the floor. Japan out already, getting some shots up. And I think that rest and just trying to figure out what they're going to do on the defensive end and deal with that trying to guard the three-point line and not foul the three-point shooter because like we said five of 16 from the field but let's not forget there's been three other times when they've taken three-point shots and they've been fouled so it is a really geared around the three ball with what japan are doing and haven't necessarily from an Australian standpoint, found the formula and how they're going to contain that just yet. No, they haven't. They are definitely worried about the three-point shooting of Japan. And there you see Monica Okoe with nine points. Again, 60% from three-point range. So there's a reason why they're worried about these three-point shooters. And if you can see right now, every single one of the Japanese players yeah. is outside the three-point line, <laughs> except for Mawuli, who is working on her free throws. It is, and, and that's how they play. And, and they're not going to deviate much from that. And we've seen it throughout the tournament. Even when there's times it looked pretty tough for them, they just stay with it. That's how they go. And it's also interesting comparing, say, Canada last night with the shooting styles. It's Japanese and a lot of the Asian countries, with their girls in particular, it's very much a two-handed push shot that they use as opposed to what we saw last night from Canada. And, but still very effective, very effective and they just space the floor well. And when they do space the floor and there's those closeouts, they've got the pace to get into the paint and cause some havoc. Well, now we see the Australians trickling out of the locker room, just under five minutes here, left in halftime. And kind of a slow start offensively for Australia. I mean, we see Mariana Tolo, great job, eight points. Whitcomb, she's been quiet. I know she has the five. I think Japan's played very good defense and mm. kind of taken Australia out of what they want to do. They're not turning the ball over. They only have four turnovers mm. compared to eight by Japan. It's really, they seem a little bit out of sync. You know what, when they go away from that high-low look, right now I think getting the ball into the post or inside the key is what's working best for them because when that happens, it opens up shooters on the outside as well. And the bigs from Australia, they're not selfish. If you're open, they'll kick the ball back out. Oh, for sure. And really last night as well, what we saw was that they did a superb job against Can Canada with that middle on ball and hitting the roller. And perhaps haven't seen a lot as much of that here. And clearly, Japan go away. They study the tape. And I think they've been pretty good at their weak side help and trying to collapse in. And with Australia only 4 of 12 from the three-point line, they can offer that help without as much fear that getting beaten from the perimeter at this point in time. So Sammy Wickham is the other one who's been fantastic throughout the tournament. Had a big game last night. She's been averaging 11 points a game. Plays a lot of minutes, just almost 27 minutes a game. And she's also a threat. And when, it, when the game was on the line against Canada last night, it was Sammy Wickham that took the matters into her hand, a couple of big, big threes to really give Australia their lead and some margin. 
And there you have Steph Talbot, five points, four assists. Remember, she was walking the line of having a triple-double last night. It was. For Australia. She was, and 11 points, nine rebounds, eight assists. And they've uh, been able to contain her. And also, Ezzy Magbagor, who in this one, oh, she's been solid. She's got her six points. Uh, hasn't been, only got the one rebound, but she's been in there and had a bit of a... A presence but just not quite in sync Australia and I, and, and I think that it's no excuse because all the teams are in the same situation yeah. but five games in six days particularly the timing of when you play those games and the energy that we had to spend last night how do you like that? They did not have that kind of technology in no, your day, just, did they? No, they did. They used to have to wait until we get the VHS tapes out. <laughs> the coaches play and rewind, play and rewind. Nowadays, it's all there for you, and, and, and that's great. It's a real great tool to have. Because as a coach, you can explain it, but sometimes the players are going, hang on, coach, that did not, that's not how I saw it. Well, hang on. <laughs> Hang on here, have a look, here it is for you to see. And it's figuring out. And, and in this situation here, clearly they're talking about their spate. Well, to me, I don't know if it's clearly, but it would seem like, based on my understanding, they're talking about their offense and how in which they want to space the floor to create those opportunities and open up some driving lanes. Well, Sandy Brondello a little bit more old school than Toru Onzuka from Japan <laughs> as she just uses the dry, uh, wet dry board. Well, we saw Japan come out real early, so they maybe did, yeah. they just had, they were doing some of their half-time analysis. So I dare say Australia would be in the same situation with the half-time break. They get down and the assistant coach is getting out their, their computers and then the head coach comes in and tries to give the broader overview different setups in the, the uh, various teams no not necessarily right or wrong way just a different way or whatever yeah absolutely coach is comfortable and yeah second half action underway here at the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup in the Sydney Superdome as Japan are taking on Australia. Japan trailing by two. Toto, her three-point shot is well off. So it's going to be Australia ball. Bit of a wild miss. Sounds silly, but sometimes they're harder to, to rebound because you, yeah, you're, you're not right. expecting them to come and they don't hit the rim and come straight at you. Well, you got to have your hands up, ready all the time. Now Tolo gets it back to Whitcomb. As nice pass from Mag Magbagor into Tolo. Well, then when, when they run that on-ball screen, they're, they're trying to help. They do get a good job back, but they're playing catch-up. And that little flash for hit the roll-up with the hockey assist. And the defensive specialist for the Opals, Steph Talbot. She's not going to be credited with that steal. It's going to go as a team steal, I believe. But it was all her. That's right. Like we saw down the other end, Whitman comes off that drive. And it's the pass to Magdeborg for the high-low for Tolo that really sets it all up. She doesn't get the assist, but credit to her. And now this time, they were worried about the roll. And that left the rise open, but Whitcomb misses her shot. Okoe, quick three-point shot is well off. And a nice contest again by Steph Talbot, though. Tora on Zuka, he's had a couple of air balls, but you wouldn't have thought by his body language. He was doing everything he could to continue to encourage his girls. Miyazaki with the extended defense. Just a little too much. 
call for the foul. But I think they need to persist with that. They need that extended pressure, be more disruptive. Australia look pretty good when they get to their half-court sets. Yeah, they do as Blitzafs finds Whitcomb. I haven't seen her miss two in a row often. No. And that time she missed the one previous, but she did not miss that three-point shot. Well, they're collapsing so hard now on the roll-up that opens up the perimeter. Well, Japan, that lead has bumped up. Magma Gore, tough take, and she finishes with the left hand. I think they need a timeout. So that's the nine point lead now for Australia. It's a 7 0 run to start the third quarter. It's an early end of the game, but just need a little settler here. Instead, they go for a substitution. There's that chase. That's a long chase yeah. to get to Whitcomb. And good way in which she relocated to make that chase a little bit further. Well, shooters nowhere to be. You know all about that. <laughs> Yasuma. Smart read. She knew yeah. Whitcomb was out of position. Yeah, nothing subtle about that foul by Wickham, like you say, just a little out of position. Have a look here, knew she had it and then just couldn't get her hands out of the way quick enough. Yasuma, and the thing you like about it, you look at Yasuma out there and she's only 161. I, mean, I think that's that, 161 with shoes on as well. But absolutely fearless. Doesn't mind going in, putting, getting into the, the traffic amongst the, the tall timber. Yep. And this and is that what, full court pressure by Japan. This is what they need to do. And that's what can happen. Yasuma again, up and in, really putting pressure on the the guards and, and that's been one even with the, throughout the selection process has been one of the, the question marks about Australia in, in, in the point guard position. No Lalani Mitchell who's been there for such a right. long period of time who guided Australia for the last few international campaigns. Nice shot by Yasuma. You said it. The fearless Yasuma now with four points back to back for Australia. And an almost another turnover by Japan. Uh, sorry, by the Opals. Whitcomb, skip pass, blitz abs. That's blocked. Great block shot by Akaho, number 88. And here we see the little pull up. And really miscommunication. Whitcomb was on that trail. Tolo stayed at home and just need to go and, and contest that mid range. Talbot. She skips it to Blitzavs. This time she drives. She might have got away with a push off as well. And they're saying it was last touched by Japan. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it was well defended. Another great defensive play by Himiwari Akaho, number 88. Shot clock. Wick comes aware. She wanted a foul, but I think that was great defense from Japan. Nice backdoor cut. Dump off pass to Akaho. She's surrounded by yellow jerseys though. Takada was open for a long time and she just didn't use her legs, but you mentioned it, Andrew. This is the fifth game mm. in six days. They had one day off in this group. So this is actually their third consecutive game in a row. It is tough, and it was split between the pools. One of the pools had three games to start the tournament, and then a day off, and oh, Ezzy just 
lap there, but only the second team foul. So just more frustration, I think, at herself that she missed it. And there you see it, just <laughs> trying to get a hand on the ball, but completely out of position to yeah. get a swipe at it. One of those plays where, you know, the coach says, why? Yeah. <laughs> what were you thinking? I know you were frustrated, but just uncalled for. Nice pass to Tokashiki. She can't convert. That was a good backside help by Talbot, I believe. I like what Tyler's doing. They're, they're in a drop situation on that middle on ball, and guards just got to get over the top and almost settle with contested twos when you're in that drops situation. Just don't want to get too close to the basket. Tolo has to let it go. And what a shot with the shot clock winding down is Mariana Tolo, who I think has had one of the best tournaments ever for her in a green and yellow jersey. She's perfect for five of five from the field for her 12 points. And another foul is going to be called against Magbigor. I really like what Tolo's doing. Wide open and just doesn't panic. Little shot fake to get the defender flying by. Just plays with such a high basketball IQ. As she gets to go off and deserves a well rested break. Now Japan, they had a little bit momentum. As they go inside, they find an, a cutting oh. Akaho. How about that finish? Steph Talbot caught watching. Yeah. On the weak side, was watching the ball, lost vision on a on her player. And nice back cut and good read and good pass. The thing is, too, if you have scouted number 88, you yeah. know that's what she loves to do. When the guards penetrate, she cuts back door underneath the basket. See Talbot just caught napping. And hey, let's give a little love to the shot as well. Little catch and shoot on the run. That was an alley-oop almost. It, 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 she made a pretty tough yeah. play look really easy. Talbot wide open coming off that inbounds pass, not able to hold it. And now Toka leading the break. Doesn't get it back because the defensive player, but balls in the hands of Hiroshiti. And how about that? She just takes that ball away from Akaho. Now Australia leading by six. Imagine tough layup off the mark. Tokashiki rips that rebound. You see this from the Opals throughout this time. They go through this period where scoring becomes just pretty tough for them. They're only at 35% so far in this game here tonight. And they've had some good looks. They really just haven't been able to capitalize on I guess you could say the same about Japan as well. There's a nice back cut. That's just where size prevailing. Yeah, Beautiful great. pass by George. You said it. That was just a nice read from George and Talbot. But we've talked about it. We've seen from both teams, you know, moments of greatness and moments of, I want to say sluggishness. <laughs> and I think fatigue has to play a part in that. And tough left-handed hook shot by Miyazawa. Showed a lot of faith in Christy Wallace. They didn't send a double team and just left it alone. And Wallace did a good job. Wallace with the turnover, and I believe that might be an unsportsmanlike. Going against Kayla George, not sure, but... You're going to have a chat about it, I think. Was it a play on the ball? It happened so quick. There we see it here. Let's have a look. I think the, she never had possession. That's what I think will help Kayla George out. The ball was still on the way, and she's okay. just reaching in right. for the ball to make the interception. If she had it, caught it and had it and then had that swipe, then she might have been in a bit of trouble. Okay. 
And Japan having trouble getting the ball in. But Okae with the reverse layup, so great job there. And I guess that's what you give up when you try and deny a little bit too hard. Though I don't think Oka, Okoe should have got all the way to the basket. No, and it was like there was some confusion between Darcy Garvin and Kayla George there on who was going to take the ball. The good pressure, and then you saw just a too late there by George. She just could have read that a lot earlier and got back and catch kept her in front. And another defensive stop by Japan. They're down six. Possibly could cut this two, three, or four points. They go inside to Mawuli. That is a tough shot. I think she wanted a foul, but good job there by Majin. Garbin. Limited minutes, but has been good in her minutes yesterday and today. Whitcomb drives. <laughs> And it's going to be a blocking foul going against Yamamoto. So Yamamoto up and in, and then just too much contact, not in the right position. And right from the start, Yamamoto is just, there's ball pressure there, but she wasn't always going to react. You couldn't tell, was she sending it to the middle? Was she sending right. it to the baseline? It was just so aggressive and, and tight. Gave the ball carrier options. And strong drive puts Mawuli out of defensive position. So Wallace drawing a foul on her, and that's bonus. So we're going to see Wallace at the free throw line. It's a good job attacking the closeout. It is. Just if you watch the way she attacks the left leg, right there, goes at the left leg, and hard when you're closing out that hard to move your feet and keep that leg in front, the defender's leg in front, real tough. What I like, too, is that Wallace attacked the defender closing out. She didn't banana dribble no. to try and avoid the contact. Instead, she went into the contact, drawing the foul. You do it a, a zillion times each week at practice when you're there <laughs> and you're doing your closeout one-on-one -on -one drills, both offensively and defensively, but that time perfectly executed. And reach and foul is going to be called against Whitcomb, so we'll see... Hiroshita to the free throw line. Another little elevator or gate play instead of coming from the side. This time it was running the player to the top of the key. It's a tough play to defend, but it's also a tough play to create shots with. When you are running away from the basket and then having to turn quickly to get that shot up, it's, it's not easy. But you... It can be, a, it's an effective play, but it's sometimes hard on the offense as well when you're right. running that hard away from the basket to have to turn and get squared up and balanced. It's not always an easy shot. Japan with a little bit of full court pressure after the free throw, but good job breaking it as Garbin, you mentioned it, she can shoot from out there. George just pulls down the offensive rebound over Takada. Whitcomb. Off the back of the iron and another offensive rebound by the Opals. And ah. Biggs shooting the three is so difficult to defend. And we saw it in the first <laughs> half, Garbin and George yeah. spreading the floor. In the first half it was Garbin, now it's George knocking down a three-point shot.
And there's that three-point shot by George. And it's a great, if you're a coach and you have shooting bigs, mm. but also bigs who can go inside in Ezzy and Tolo, just opens up so much. You have so many threats. And it's a little change up in the rotation. Sandy Brundell has usually used these last couple of minutes before three-quarter time for Lauren Jackson. And she's gone with Darcy Garvin instead. Now Garvin to Whitcomb. Whitcomb goes down the middle, finds George. That's a tough layup oh. if I've ever seen one. Nice touch by George. A little unconventional. <laughs> little dipsy do type shot rather than the regulation power to the basket. And how about that? So we have five seconds left, and now Australia just pushing that lead. 54-43, still very much within reach, but if Australia can score here, as they go right into George, turn around, Why not? and it's good. Well, at the end of three quarters, we now have seen Australia with their biggest lead of the game, 56 to 43. And what about Kayla George coming in and giving a spark for the Opals to run all this sophisticated action, cuts, screening, all sorts of stuff. Sometimes just throw it into the big and let it do a thing. Had taken a look at some of the stats that uh, shooting by both teams hasn't been at a premium and Japan really starting to taper there at 33% and really having some challenges from the three-point line now. Five of 20 at 25% and it's been an efficient quarter, real efficient quarter for Australia on the offensive end. They scored 20 and they've complemented their 20 with some outstanding defense holding Japan to only nine. And those 5 of 20, 25% from the 3, 33% overall. And also in that quarter, starting to get on top on, on the glass. We saw in the first half there was only a, a three, a four rebound difference. Right now, it's starting to get away from Japan, 33 to 21. And on top of that, of that 33, 12 of them coming on the offensive boards for Australia. Only 5-0 boards for Japan and Australia. One of the elite rebounding teams in the competition statistically through pool play and there's that Kayla George knocks down the three gets herself going and then a little power play down low throw it in turn around when you've got it cooking I would have just get that last one to fall and that's a huge huge confidence booster momentum type shot that you take in to the three-quarter time break. Third, excuse me, fourth quarter action underway. We have Japan trailing 43 to 56. If Australia win, we know that they're gonna finish. First in their first. pool. First. And if Japan have an unbelievable con uh, comeback, hey, they can do it. They're three-point shooters. Then Australia could drop all the way to third. Second, sorry. That's right. Second now. And that's all got to do with the splits. And there's Wallace. Right place, right time. Another offensive board for Australia. But... The good thing about it, and the reason why they want to finish first and not second, although they're into a, a draw for the matchups in the quarterfinals is, is if you finish first, USA has finished first on the other side and means in those crossovers, the only time you can meet them is in the gold medal game. So whereas if you finish second, then you run the risk of might win that quarterfinal game, but you're going to yeah. <laughs> have to play them in the semifinal and your chances for playing that gold medal 
become pretty slim. That being said, you and I have watched China throughout this tournament, That's and true. boy, do they look good as My well. Word. You're right. That three-point shot by Mawuli is off the mark. And I just wanted to highlight uh, during the third and fourth period time, 37 points has been scored by Australia's bigs tonight. Yeah. And More that, than half of their points. And, and that's not a, a coincidence or just this. That is strategically Sandy Brondello seeing what she's up against, seeing the size advantage and making the point of emphasis of how they're going to play on the offensive end. And Mawuli falls hard to the ground. So she draws the foul and she's going to go to the free throw line as she limps up. And in this, as we see there, might have got away with a little hook tripped. with that right elbow. Perhaps the hook coming earlier. There's that right arm and there it is, the little chicken wing <laughs> around Madgen. Goes on whistle, instead gets called for the foul. But when you think of those quarterfinal matchups, Australia will either play Puerto Rico or Belgium and Canada will play whoever Australia doesn't draw in the magic ping pong ball bucket that they put the balls in. They draw them out. It's a little pot. It is a little pot. It's going to happen after this game. And I tell you what, a lot of the people not happy with Michelle Timms because she did, did the draw for the Bulls. And <laughs> she's... Uh, so the, they blame the uh, Timsy? I'm told her that she is not going to be allowed to go in and pull those balls out again. They figure that she didn't bring as much luck with the drawing of the balls in the groups because this has been called the, what, the group of death. The group of death, exactly. So George's shot is off the mark. And in the group of death, we have France, Mali, Serbia, Canada, Japan, and Australia. And we know that Japan is not moving on. And 13 months mm. ago, they were silver medalists. And they gave the U.S. a run for their money. I did. So in this pool, definitely a good team is missing out on advancing to the quarterfinals of this year's FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. As Japan gets it in. Miyazaki to Takada, tough shot. And now you imagine Australia with this kind of a lead. Oh. Nice pass to Talbot. She can't hold on to it though. Whitcomb gets it back. Garbin. Nice touch for a shooter and Talbot is going to be called for a rebounding foul. Great hustle by Talbot to try and get another offensive board but we talked about Talbot's versatility and good rotation on the defensive end by Talbot and there's maybe just a little tweak of the knee. They can't afford to have Sammy Wickham go have any problems. I think she's okay. She seems like she's moving okay but Talk about Steph Talbot's versatility on the defensive end. The last couple of possessions, she's been running the point guard for point spot for Australia. As Yasuma just misses everything on that layup attempt. I think Wickham, the, the bandage you see on her knee is a floor burn injury. So she might have just kind of, you know, scraped it. Again, Talbot goes inside to George. George. Misses a layup, follows her rebound. Can't make that one, Mag Magbigor. Tough shot, so Australia not able to convert three easy shot attempts in that series. Yasuma inside to Mawuli. Mawuli, step back. A little fade away, is not able to go in. Don't think she needed to fade she had away that much. Imagine the size advantage against Imagine. Tokashiki called for the hold on the slip there by George. Wallace checking back in for Wickham. Those that aren't aware, Wickham is Australia's naturalized player. 
And the issue is before they also had Leilani Mitchell, correct? That's right. So they kind of, you know, Whitcomb already had her passport at the same time, but they had to make their decision as to which player to go with for some of these yeah. these events. And that's why, you know, we saw Whitcomb show up for Asia Basket maybe a few more times than Leilani did. Well, that's right. And we've got an unsportsmanlike foul on Wallace. Didn't see what happened. Straight away, they take Wallace out. And that's going to lead to two and possession. Well, Jackson's just kind of laughing at Wallace as she goes back to the bench. Uh, and she just actually checked in. Yeah. That's a, a weird one because it. I didn't must ever have a look at what happened. Yeah, that'll that'll get you one. Little push there. Yasuma, plenty of mayo on the fall though. Plenty of mayo, but you, you can't do that. I love Wallace, but we saw the unsportsman <laughs> like last night on Naira Field as Tokashiki misses that easy layup. And sometimes I just want to ask her what she's thinking. But she's such a competitor. Well, I don't it. think she knows how to calm down when the clock's not running. <laughs> no, she's she's a fierce competitor. Nice hands. Mawuli pokes it away. Coach is never happy with it, but you're a little more happy with it when that happens when you're 14 up, not when <laughs> the scores are, are tight. Yasuma with fancy ball handling, and it's going to be a foul. So she's done a great job tonight for Japan being aggressive, attacking, getting to the rim. I believe she's probably been to the line more than anyone else. And it's oh, Mawuli, she went as well. So Yasuma, this is going to be her sixth trip to the line. Mawuli, she has six shot attempts from the free throw line as well, but she shot that three They've been that was good. fouled on. They've been good from the free throw line. 15, well, excuse me now, 16 of 18. They've had 18 free throws. Australia only been in the line eight times, six of eight. So good job there by Yasuma, and it's now back to yeah. a 10-point lead again. We well, go back to a play three or four possessions ago, 14 up, and Australia miss George and misses those little easy ones around the basket, and now all of a sudden it's... It's a game, and there's a, a defensive foul. This time it's on Yasuma, I think. Yasuma, sorry, and on Wallace. Oh, no, got it wrong. So Wallace is the one who draws the foul on Hiro Hiroshita. Hiroshita with the foul. So now imagine... Wallace getting an opportunity to check back into the game. Mawuli is going to be called for the kind of hugging foul. Mm. She's upset with herself. Or upset with the call, maybe. I tell you, this is a, This next two minutes really determines the game, whether we do have a game or not. And Australia looking a little shaky the last couple of possessions. But guess what? The Who settler. is there? Talbot Totolo. Good old fashioned flex cut. No help from the screen up and great pass by Talbot. Yasuma, great second half for her. Three point shot attempt, touches the front of the rim. And these shots for Japan, they're on line. They're just missing either shot, short or long. Mag Bigor. And I thought she actually came back down and landed on the ground before the shot was even attempted, which it, I think should have been, let's take a look here. No, that was a great pass from Talbot to Tolo. 
you know, she came to a two foot shot stop. She jumped. Then she comes down. Well, and I then th the I, shot I, went off. Yeah, I, I think the foul came before she actually hit the floor with her feet. So, but you're right. It, it, it was a, a close one. Could have potentially been a travel. Instead, they get the reach in. Mag Bagor is, is elite and the way in which he can get to the basket. In fact, I'd love to see a few more ISO plays for her. Get her on the elbow and just let her rip someone to the, <laughs> to the rim. Really quick first step. Very quick first step, yeah. And she, she gets those opportunities through the flow of the game. I, I, I haven't... There may be something in, in the playbook for that, but if it's not, I'd like to see it because she's looking impressive anytime she can just get a head of steam up, get downhill and get on the rim. So it's going to be a timeout. And that is the second timeout used by Coach Onzuka. So this fourth quarter has not been pretty offensively. Six to five so far scored in under five minutes, over five minutes of play. Australia two of nine from two point range. Japan 0 of five and also 0 of two from the three point line. And offense has been a struggle right throughout this tournament. They, they're eighth in scoring, as opposed to 12 months ago in Tokyo during the Olympics. They were second, 82 points a game they were putting up, and only at 65 in this tournament. And a lot of that's their three-point shooting, which in Tokyo they're 38%, and here just just on 27. Nice hustle defense there by Mariana Tolo. Mag Bigor. Wallace. Gets it inside to Tolo. She has time to work. Huh. And she just bulldozes Mawuli, but she can't finish the layup. There's a, a lot of contact. And you're right, just bullocks her way to the basket. Now, to me, that's that's an offensive foul. This game is so, or it's already so heavily weighted in favor of the offense. Right. If you're a defender and you're in the right person in your stand, right position, and someone just runs you over, <laughs> I think you deserve that call. I do too. And you want to be rewarded for playing good, hard defense. And we're not seeing a lot of it here tonight, especially for Japan. I feel like more than maybe most games. Some calls have definitely gone against them tonight, but unfortunately, it's not a reason why they're down. No. They're missing shots. They're turning the ball over. Mawuli at the buzzer. That does not go. So 14-point lead. It's getting difficult for Japan. Three minutes and 25 seconds remaining here in the game. Miscommunication. Wallace... Hustles back on defense, but it's going to stay Japan ball. Quick rest for Sammy Whitcomb comes in, and you'd expect that she'll be on to try and close this one out. Okoe, no one to pass to. Magbagor, great defense. 
Almost a turnover. She somehow gets the ball back. Finds Hiroshita. Now it's a three-point shot off the front of the rim. Mawuli dives in from the three-point line and pulls down that offensive board. Corner, three, well off. It's an air ball, so it is gonna be a 24 second shot clock violation. And Tolo again, just in that middle on ball, in the drops, and just her ability to keep the guards in front. And it goes unnoticed, forced to kick out pass, but great job by Tolo. As Whitcomb, she's played some big minutes here tonight for this Australian team. Same with Talbot. Good thing is, it's a day off tomorrow, but if you want to make it all the way to the final, it's going to be three more games mm. in a row. Tolo somehow touches the rim, but Talbot there for the offensive board. She wanted a foul. Tolo picks up her miss. Whitcomb says, if no one's going to guard me, <laughs> I'll shoot it. They're the hardest one to guard off the second shot, the kick out pass. And that time, no one really showing a lot of determination to get out there and challenge that three point shot. I haven't seen a lot of Lauren Jackson in this one. Only played the, the four minutes in the first half. But my question is, you know, ever since the third quarter where Australia outscored Japan 20 to nine, they've been in control. You know, Japan has got the score back to just 10 before and a little, I don't think they've gone into signal digits until they got that lead in the third. And we'll just give a quick pause so we can listen in on the timeout. So what I was saying is, you know that Lauren Jackson, if you want to go all the way, so with a win tonight, Australia will finish first, right? That's right. Okay, so Australia finishes first. We're not sure who they will play. The draw will happen after this game. It's either going to be Puerto Rico or Belgium. And, and I think the preference would be Puerto Rico, but Belgium without Misaman now, who's had a calf injury and is out for the rest of the tournament, that certainly diminishes the firepower in Belgium, but I would much rather be playing against Puerto Rico if I'm Australia than Belgium, even with missing the Nice there. shot out of the timeout is Yamamoto. So the, the quarterfinals is Thursday, assuming they beat Belgium or Puerto Rico. I'm going to guess quarterfinals between the U.S. and China. They'll both win their quarterfinal from what we have seen so far. Not taking away from any teams here, but what we have seen so far. So then you're saying they won't meet the U.S. until the finals. So they'll play China. Correct. And hopefully the U.S. in the final if you're an Opals fan. Why don't you rest Lauren as much as you can right now? Because I could see, especially against China, Lauren being a good matchup for some of those bigs who maybe don't want to get out and defend her three-point shot. For sure. And, and let's not forget, she's 41. And, <laughs> oh, right. That? And uh, they, they've managed her really well, I think, throughout the tournament, being selective when they played her. She's only averaging nine minutes a game. And just to get another day off tomorrow to chance to rest up a little bit more. And just some confusion about whether it only just grazed the rim. Yeah, you saw it change yeah. its spin. You understand why the shot clock operator might have missed it. So Wickham now, who's had another solid game for the Opals. And that's another three-point shot rolls in for Sammy Wickham. And boy, was she excited after that shot. Love the passion. Okoe, oh, fakes the handoff, goes all the way to the basket, and Blitzass comes over <laughs> a little bit too late, or a lot too late. And good job there by Okoe, 
attacking and finishing. And there we see, watch this reaction by Sammy Whitcomb, folks. She appreciates how important it is and what's at stake and also what they've been through. They dug themselves a real hole. That first up yes. loss, everyone was pointing fingers and questioning the strategy, the coach, the players. And then, boy, how quickly it can turn. And Did now it... the fans love them again. <laughs> That's right. The fickle nature of it all. That's a backcourt eight-second violation. Couldn't quite get it over. And good defense by Japan. They certainly give them a lot of respect. They've shown great character. They've ne never shown it thrown in the towel. There we see Beck Allen. They'll get her back. They That's will. another one. That's They're... another one. And... It'll be interesting to see if they can still play the same style of game when Beck Allen comes back. And I think they can. I think she's smart enough and talented enough. Nice pass to Takada. No foul, though. So imagine just having another great perimeter shooter like Beck Allen and with the post playing with the kind of confidence that they have right now. And Akaho is going to be called for a foul. Well, 40.5 seconds left. Looks like the Australian Opals will be finishing in first. In Group B, they are up 68 to 54 over Japan. And Sandy Brondello still looks nervous. Well, that's right. And I think uh, she'll sleep a little easier tonight knowing that she's got a day off. And A day off? <laughs> well, not really a day. They'll still practice. They'll still do their psych section. They've probably got a weight session. And then they've got a, their massage and recovery. So when you talk about a day off, it's a day off a game. But it's... Well, huge ovation for Sammy Wickham as she comes off. And Annalie Maley checks into the game. Along with Christy Wallace. Tough take by Yamamoto. And Meili comes up with the rebound. And that's her, her signature. In the NBL1 competition in Australia, which is just second below division, the, it's kind the of? second division, it's an off-season, but a lot of the first division players play it because it's in the off-season. Right. Annalie Meili played for the Eltham Wildcats and last season averaged 19 rebounds a game. <laughs> a game. You don't do that without extraordinary effort and tenacity. Tenacity is a great word. And, you know, you always hear coaches saying rebounding isn't just about athleticism. Actually, athleticism mm. might be one of the least necessary attributes to have when you want to become a good rebounder. I really think it's mm. just having the tenacity and the want to go and get the ball. And a nose for the ball as well. Instinctively, yes. you're, you're reading it off the rim and it's a, a, it's something that's hard to teach. You can teach boxing out and you can teach the fundamentals, but that instinct for it is uh, a little harder and she's got it in spades. She played for the Bendigo Spirit in the WNBL and even at that league, she averaged 15 a game. Right. One last possession for Japan. Yamamoto kicks it. That's a three-point shot by Toto, but it is off the mark. So tonight, we know that Australia are moving on in first place in Group B with this win over Japan, 71 to 54. Well, it'll look like a, a regulation win when you just haven't watched the game, you check the box scores, you think it's pretty comfortable, but it, it was not. Japan showed great fight and spirit right throughout and took it up to the Aussies at half time. It was only a two point lead to Australia. And for much of the first half, Japan had the ascendancy, but just the will and the home court and the desire that the Opal showed in that second half, they ought to be commended for the way they kept, they, they held their nerve. Because 
when you've already locked up a top two space spot courtesy of that win by Serbia over France you know there's a tendency after a big win last night you go well the job's done we're going to be there anyway and it maybe took them a quarter or so to click in but once they did you can see how this Opals team has the potential to go deep into this tournament and uh, likely to be playing off for a medal and who knows it might be a real shiny one yeah, I agree with you. To start the tournament, I was worried after watching their performance oh. against France. I was really worried and I was questioning. I was saying, this is not a medal contending team. Oh. And game by game, I believe that they have really proved, improved, and also proved that they are ready to compete against anyone mm. in the world. Because this was a very, very difficult pool that they somehow ended up finishing first. They did, they earned their right, and you see, I don't know, stats there, they ended up dominating the boards 49 to 29, as we take a look at some of the highlights, and Wickham has been a warrior for this Opals team, and she led the scoring with the 15 points, and, and right there, I think, was the signature play of the night for the Opals, the way in which they were to get that on ball, they have the roller, and then it was the one-two pass from the high-low that really exposed Japan. And once they started to collapse and figure it out, then they eventually got it going from the three-point line. We spoke about them being around 20 25% for much of the game. Well, they ended up at 40% from the three-point line, going 8 of 20, which is more than solid. And as we mentioned, we pay credit to... Yasuma is another one that we really like. The way she fought hard and certainly gave it everything she could and Takata is one that they did a good job of containing she was one of their leading scorers only they held her to only six points this evening and all in all it was a, a commendable all-round performance by the Opals only 11 turnovers that's very solid healthy yes that is very healthy and that's a big a big positive going into the next round, which we know the Opals will do. They were kind of holding their breath earlier tonight watching that France-Serbia game. Had France won that game, they wouldn't have had a chance to finish in the top nope. two. That's right. So Serbia with a big win over France. And the funny thing is, didn't matter if Serbia won or not. That's right. They were already, they already going to be fourth. Unless they have won by 18 or something. Well, that's what I was worried about. But allegedly, and you'd know more about this than I would, Shona, having spent so much time in France and in Europe, apparently there's a there's a bit of animosity. There's a little between, rivalry between the two, was, yes. We don't care about If we can cause some pain for France, Serbia are more than happy to inflict it. So, Group B results. Canada with a win over Mali this morning. Serbia beating France. And now Australia with a big, important win over Japan. 71 to 54. There you see it, folks. The group of death at the end of group phase is Australia in first, Canada in second, Serbia in third, and uh, France in fourth, Japan fifth, Mali sixth. Third and fourth doesn't really mean anything. First and second actually doesn't really mean anything either. Well, from the Superdome here at the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup, that is the end of group play, folks, from Shona Thorburn and Andrew Gaze. What a game and what a tournament. We'll be back on Thursday. Thank you and good night.